Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing a short tour and introduction to the Dutchman. Uh, there's a lot of things for me to show each renter when they come to pick it up and I just thought it'd be easier if I had a video ready so they can review it whenever they have questions. So this is the Dutchman. It's a 1992-93. Somewhere in there. There's going to be several keys. It's already unlocked, but I'll show you which key goes to the door. It's the one that looks like a house key. That is the one. To unlock it, it is already unlocked though. So we'll just go in. This is the door. And the door can stay open by latching this onto here. Now it's latched open. Just make sure that you release it before you yank on the door already been broke one time but that was my brother who yanked on it not paying attention to the fact that it was still latched down here is your step to get the step out so you can see right there it's kind of latched you have to lift up on it on both sides it's hard to do one hand here but lift up on it and uh, it's best when you slide it farthest to the right it'll lock in right there and then you have your step out Put it back in. You just lift, slide it in, let it latch on that little spot right there. That's how you use the steps. Let's go inside here. Got a carbon oxide detector for safety. Handle to grab to get in. That is the switch for the outside light. There is a Brand new smoke detector installed for safety as well. We'll take a look here. Show you around just a little bit. There's a quick tour of it. And I'm gonna go, I'll just start right here. So it is a gas oven. Two drawers underneath. All of the drawers in the RV you have to lift up first to slide it out. Like so. That way they aren't sliding open while you're driving. So that's why they are designed like that. It is a gas oven. So to use the oven, you need the long stem lighter, which I leave in the RV. You would open this, turn the gas on, reach up in the top part here. And light the flame. Same thing with the top. Anyone who's familiar with a gas oven or gas stove, same thing. Turn on whichever burner you'd like. The gas will come up. Use the long stem lighter. Light it. Pretty simple. I do leave a few things in here. Uh, usually just the long stem lighter, maybe an air freshener. There are some matchsticks and the remotes to the TV and DVD player in here as well. Next is the test. This will show you the levels of each of the systems. So we have tank two, tank one, the fresh water, which is the water in the holding tank on the RV, the LP gas, and the battery. So if we push this button right here that says test, hold the top here, it'll show you that the tank two, which is in the first position, which is actually the gray water, which is water that goes down the drain of the sink or the shower is considered the gray water. It is empty. Tank one, which is in the second position, is actually the black tank, which is the septic or the toilet waste tank. Then the fresh water is water that I have put in the RV that you can use to wash your hands and take showers. That is the fresh water is full. The LP is full and the battery condition is full right now. So that just shows you how to use that. Next, this is the water pump button. So if you want to use your sink or shower, you're going to need to have the water pump on. Push the button, little red light comes on, pump on, and that forces the water to the faucets. Here is the hood light for the stove. Good fan. Pretty simple. There is a microwave. Microwave is open by yanking on the bottom of the door right here. So there's that. 
And then there is a cupboard, her pantry. Keep a couple things in there. Lights, several lights in the RV. You just slide them to turn them on. Here is the sink. Double sink. There's a cupboard underneath the sink here. You can keep some pots and pans in there if you need to. Over here is a couple small drawers for utensils, whatever you need them for. And here, which is right next to the sink, inside is a button. This button, if you turn it on, that is your water heater button. It'll be on for a couple seconds, just to let you know that it's lighting. It is gas or electric. I usually have both on just to make sure that it has plenty of whatever it needs. It'll go off right away. That's just letting you know that it did come on. I heard the gas kick on, if you can hear that. So it is warming up the water right now. I'm gonna shut it off, we don't need it right now. All right, there is a curtain. If you wanna pull the curtain and have some privacy, it'll go all the way over on the track that way so that the queen bed is private. Oh, let's see, there is a vent in the ceiling. If you need to let in some fresh air, a couple storage ca cabinets above the bed here, a couple speakers for the radio, get you some sound in the back here. On the back window, right here, is a magnifying glass so that when you're driving, and you look in your rearview mirror and you look at that magnifying glass, it's going to show you the ground right behind the RV so that you can kind of see what's behind you when you're backing up. It's not perfect. It's not a backup camera. There is no backup camera, but that does help. Is bad. The only thing that I really leave in here besides a long stem lighter is a mattress cover. I like to have a mattress cover on here just so the mattress doesn't get ruined and just for sanitary purposes to keep it cleaner. Oh, well, that's on there. And then to the right is the bathroom. So I'll show you that. Let's see here. Towel hook up top. If you need to get some fresh air into the bathroom, you can crank this and open it up. Let some sunlight in. If you push this little red button, it'll turn on the small fan. Suck out any smells. Make sure that this is closed while you're driving. You don't want to get any side winds that'll rip that off. That would not be good. There's a light, small window, shower. It's not a very big shower, but there is a shower in here with a small bench. Uh, there is a latch that holds the door of the shower. You can release that, slide it over, slide it back. This one here, right here, the latch so that it stays and it's not moving while you're driving. I try to keep a couple rolls of toilet paper in here. There is toilet paper designed specifically for RVs that disintegrates easier and it doesn't clog up your system. So I do try to keep some of that in the RV. Air freshener, toilet. On the back side of the toilet is a lever for flushing, but there are two levers. There is a white part of the lever. See if we can see that. And then there's a gray part to the lever. All right, and turn on the light here. The white is to let extra water into the toilet. If you pull that, I don't know if you can hear that, it lets a little extra water into the toilet. That's if you're gonna go number two and you need to have a little extra water in there. Pull the white, let a little extra water into the toilet first. When you're ready to flush, you pull the gray, that lets it go. And that's how you use the toilet. There's one more. I'll make you dizzy, but there's one more hook there for towels. I'm close that so I can show you bathroom sink area, mirror, medicine cabinet, towel hook. The little gray thing in the back of the sink is um, to absor absorb absorb odors in the air, trying to keep the RV fresh. There's a small sink to wash your hands. Down here is where I usually keep a couple rolls of toilet paper. Right there is the RV toilet paper. 
Uh, that is a deodorizer for the septic system. I usually pour a little bit of that into the septic system in between renters. Uh, you'll be able, you can probably smell it when you're in the bathroom. You'll be able to smell the deodorizer. Let's just try to keep the smell down. I just realized I forgot to show you something over here. Not many people need this, but that is the thermostat in case you need heat. Because it is getting a little colder out. You might actually need that. So there's the thermostat. Turn the heat on. You need to have the gas on first. Keep moving here. This is the closet area. There's a couple drawers down below. And here, got a rod to hang clothes. It's a pretty big area. Let's straighten that out and move while we're driving there. Okay, there's that. Keep going to the fridge area. So up top, more storage. Quite a bit of storage in this RV. So there's that. Um, bathroom door should probably stay shut while you're traveling. Otherwise, as you're driving, it's going to swing open and back. So that should stay shut. Here is the fridge. There's a freezer and a fridge. As you can see, I have it set to auto. The fridge will run on electric or gas. I have it plugged in and I have the gas on right now just so that it gets whatever energy it needs. I have heard that the refrigerators cool down quicker if you have gas on or if you're cooling it down with gas. So I just keep it on auto. It's plugged in. It's also got the gas going to it. So I keep it on auto. Now, here's the fridge. One thing to note is before each renter, I plug in the RV and I cool down the fridge so that it's cold when it gets picked up. But the only way to keep the power going to the refrigerator while you're driving is if you have the generator on or if you have the propane gas on, which you're not advised to drive with propane on. So I wouldn't advise that whatsoever. The only way to keep the power going to the fridge and to continue to cool it is to have the generator on. Otherwise, if you keep the door shut, until you get to wherever you're going and then plug it in. It should hold plenty of cold to keep your groceries cold enough. So that's the only way. I get quite a few questions about that. So you can always message me if you have questions about it. I keep one little trash can in here. All right, I'm gonna back up a little bit here. Dining area, there's some cupboards up top and a light. That is a crank to let an antenna up on the roof. I don't advise using it just because I'm afraid somebody's going to forget and drive off with it. Plus, most people don't need cable while they're camping. But that is what that's for, just so you know. Cupboards. This one has a DVD player in it, which I leave in the camper with the TV. The TV does move out and adjust and move as you need it. I'll push that back quick. Then dining area. There are seven seat belts in the RV, so you can have up to seven passengers. Seat belts, there's only two over here, two over here, driver, passenger, and this chair. Uh, let's see, this table turns into a bed. To turn it into a bed, you lift off the top, grab the poles or pipes and pull them out of the floor, lay the pipes down, then you put the tabletop and it sits right here on this ledge. And that creates a, about a twin size bed. There is also storage underneath. There's that one. Over here. Underneath down here, it shows me my generator hours. I don't, at this time, charge for generator hours. Maybe I'll change my mind down the road, but the generator runs off of the fuel that you put in the RV for gas, so I don't see any point in charging for the generator, besides the fact that I have to change the oil in it every now and then, but for right now, I'm not charging for the generator use. There is a button here to turn the generator off and on. I usually do it outside because sometimes this button gets a little testy and it won't it struggles to shut it off completely. So I try to avoid using this, but you can try it here and you either hold the button up to start the generator or hold the button down to turn it off. 
if it's having trouble shutting it off, I just advise going outside and doing it there. Let's keep moving. Above me is the ceiling air conditioner. When it's hot out, which you wouldn't need this today because it's really cold, but when it's hot out, you have an air conditioner up front, just like any other vehicle. But if you need more air conditioner than that, that's when you would turn this on. The only time that this will run though is if the RV is plugged in or if you are using the generator. So if you need that much power, you're gonna have to either give it more power with plugging in or using the generator. Otherwise, usually the dash air conditioner is plenty cold enough to keep everybody cooled down. There is a small curtain to close so that whoever's sleeping on the bunk can have a little bit of privacy. We have a couple window covers down here in case there's too much daylight coming in and you want it to be a little bit darker. You can always put those in place. Up here is the top bunk. So we bought this RV for ourselves, but it needs a little bit of work. The wallpaper is starting to buckle and fold and we want to remodel the inside. But having an RV and maintaining it especially if you want to remodel it, it's not cheap. So we decided to start renting out the Dutchman and rent it at a fair price so that we can get people in here and getting it on the road and letting people use it, but also so we can use the extra income to eventually remodel. I'm hoping to do that this winter. So this is the top bunk. The mattress, half of the bed will slide so that there's plenty of room to stand up and get to the driver's seat. But when you're ready to sleep in it, you go up here, you grab this mattress, and you pull it over, and it sits on these ledges. It does have a, about an, I think it's an inch, or else it's three-quarter thick plywood on the bottom side of it, so it is very sturdy. There's another vent above here if you need it. Again, that would need to be closed while you're driving. There is a protective cover on the outside of this so that if you forget and it's open while you're driving, it's not that big of a deal, but just for safety reasons. I advise everything to shut. There's that. Let's keep moving along here. Driver's seat. It is a manual door window. Have it down a little bit. Okay. That shows you the level so that you know that you're level side to side. Right there it tells you your height and width and that's an old sticker so it has a boat length on it. But up here, let's see, that's for heat and cold. Two buttons. The one on the left the red one does nothing, that's why it says nothing. And the one on the right is an extra motor fan. That's if you're gonna be sitting in traffic and the engine is starting to get hot, you can always turn on the extra motor fan, which will help keep the motor cool. Uh, we traveled a little bit this summer and it was like a 95 to 100 degree day and we were sitting in traffic, there was lots of construction. So we turned that on. Other than that, I, I don't think we've ever used it besides that day. Up here. Shows you the mileage, radio, one inlet for a charger. Down here, there is a manual for the motor. I don't think you'll ever need it, but it is in here. I also put uh, the registration and your insurance card will be in here for each trip. So there's that. Passenger side. There's that. Here is the captain's chair for the seatbelt. There's a light, some more storage. Fly swatter, that's always handy when you're camping. Fire extinguisher. Yeah, I think that's about it for inside here. If you're ever traveling with it and you have questions, you can always try to get a hold of me. You can call me, text me, 
And if you are not able to get a hold of me in case I'm at work or something, you can always call Outdoorsy. Their helpline can help you in case you have basic questions, you know, how to turn on the water heater, questions like that. Okay, so that's the inside of the Dutchman. Let's go to the outside and take a look at it. There's a step here. All right, so there is a deadbolt on the door, so that while you're traveling, that should be locked. There's a screen door if you want to just have a screen shut. And you unlock it here. There's that. Seems how I'm filming by myself today. I'm not gonna show you how to use the awning on this video. I do have a video of how to turn or how to put the awning up that I send my renters and I can show you in person if you'd like to see it in person. Down here, this is the propane area. Look at this. And here is a white knob. Right now, it is on. To shut it off, you turn all the way to the right. All the way to the right, it shuts it off. Now it's off. I have the fridge cool down, so I'm gonna leave it open. But that's where that is. That's where you refill it. Other than that, you wouldn't need to do anything down in this compartment. Keep going. Passenger side. The tires have tons of tread on them. They're in good shape. I check the fluids before every renter picks it up. So the fluids have been checked. I have someone picking it up today. Okay. Down here is the generator. So this is how you would turn it on if you need extra power. Turn this. Turn that one. This comes up. There is a thing here that'll hold that up while you're doing stuff with it. So this is it. Just had the oil changed. And I had the generator checked over to make sure it's good to go. That's it somewhere right now. Okay, so the only thing you would have to do in this compartment is you either hold the stop or the start button to stop or start it. This generator is kind of loud. It's about the sound of a lawnmower motor, I would say. So I will turn it on. It is going to be loud, so I'm not going to leave it on very long. But I'll turn it on just so you know. You just hold the side to start and then to stop it, hold the stop. I'll turn it on for a couple seconds here. <laughs> trying to say that but it was too loud so that's that so if you need extra power to run the fridge to run the lights and you're not plugged in at a campsite you can turn that on otherwise if you're plugged in at a campsite you won't need to use the generator over here in this compartment I usually keep extra fluids uh, just to top off in between renters right now I just have some coolant in there and a funnel and in here is just extra stuff for the RV which you won't need any of the stuff the only thing that is usually right here is the adapter for the power cord, which I'll show you in a minute because it's plugged in, I'm using it. But that's where I keep it in between renters or while you're traveling, it goes in this clear container. Otherwise, that's the only thing that's in here. This is just the back side of the refrigerator. Here is where you fill up with gas. It's just regular gas. There is a key to unlock that. So I will show you which key that is. Actually, I have it in my pocket. It's the one that looks fairly newer because we had to replace the cap. That is the gas key. So, unlock it, fill it with regular gas. It's almost. Alright, let's talk about septic. Down here is the septic emptying spot, black tank. In a little bit, I'm going to show you the hose. So you would come over here and you would twist this cap to the left, that'll open it. Sometimes a little bit of fluid will sneak past the seal, so just watch out when you take the cap off. It doesn't always leak, but sometimes there's just a little bit of fluid that sneaks past that seal. But you would remove this cap, then you would take a hose, the hose, and you would put it on there. 
and you would attach it, so you'd turn it and attach it, and then you'd run the hose down and into the ground or into the dump site. Once the hose is hooked up here and it's into the ground, then you would pull this lever out and that releases the everything that's in this black tank. And then you leave that open. And then you would go to the other side and you would pull there's a gray lever, looks just like this. You pull the gray, and that lets the gray water, which is the dirty water that went down the sink or the bathtub, it'll let it come out the exact same spot. It'll come through the black tank and out this exact same spot so that it'll rinse out your hose and rinse out your tanks. And then you would push in the gray lever on the other side, come to this side, push in the black lever, remove the hose, put the hose back in the compartment that's on the other side that I'm gonna show you, and then you put this cap back on, and that's how you empty the septic tank. I do charge a fee if you bring it back and you haven't emptied it. So just be advised of that. And this is the power cord. So right now, I have it plugged in so that it can cool down the refrigerator. But when it's not plugged in to a drop cord or into an outlet, it gets plugged in to itself. Let's see if I can show you that. There it is. Right there is the outlet that you plug this giant cord into. So when it's not plugged in over there, it gets plugged in to itself. You wrap up the cord, a lot of cord here. You wrap it up, put it in this compartment, shut it. That's how you travel with it. Keep going. Back here, see these black things here. This is something that the previous owners installed. It was to haul firewood to the campsites. So if you're wondering what those things are, that's just where they had extra storage for firewood. Any damage that's already done to the RV when you pick it up, I take a note of on our contract so that you know that you're not liable for it, starting with this ladder, which got bent with the previous owner. It's bent. There's no reason for anyone of my renters to be up there anyway. So when I need to go up there, I use a ladder. Otherwise, please don't use the ladder. It is bent and it needs to be replaced. Right here is water. So there's going to be two spots in here. There's going to be a spot for you to hook up a garden hose. So if you are at a campsite, you can take a garden hose and you can hook it up in here and you can use the water from the spigot right there, garden hose from the campsite spigot, plug it in here, and then you can use the water from the campsite instead of using the water that's being held in the holding, or the holding tank. Right here is where I put in water and I fill it. So your holding tank is full. So if you need to refill your holding tank while you're traveling, that's where you'd refill it. If you just want water pressure from a garden hose, you can hook it up here. And that's what this is. I'll give you this set of keys when you pick it up. Quite a few of them, so it takes a little bit to learn which key does what. That's the engine key. This one is to unlock the driver and passenger door. And then there's three of them that look similar that you gotta figure out which compartment they open. And then that's the gas key. This is the ones that you get when you pick it up. Let's see what else I have to show you here. That's just the vent from the stove. That's the water heater backside. There are some outlets out here. And there's outside light there. I'll send you each of my renters the link to watch the awning video down in this compartment is a bunch of two by fours and wood the rv needs to be setting level when you are running the refrigerator if it's not level the motor on the refrigerator will be overworked and it could burn up the motor so if you need to level yourself out and you're not sitting very level you grab some of those two by fours put it in front of the tires and you can roll up on those so that you're sitting more level should show you where that level is. I showed you where the one is up front next to the shifter. But the one inside, right here, there's the level to show you this way. So it needs to be setting level. One more. Okay, let's see. Right here is the back compartment. Bottom, that's where that gray pole is, right there. That's when you're releasing the water out of the holding tanks of the gray water, which is water that goes down the sink drain and the bathtub drain. That's the gray water. That's the release for it. So, let's see here. 
find the right key again. Let's see if I can show you with the mess department quick. Again, I can go over all this information when someone picks up the RV, but I thought it'd be quicker if I could at least show it to them ahead of time. And hold these compartment doors open. Oops, I missed. Put a mess there. Now we'll hold it open for you. Okay, down here. There's usually a garden hose. That garden hose is usually in this bag, but that's what that bag is for, just so the water doesn't go all over this over here. That is the holding tank for the fresh water, so you can see it's full. And that's what you'd fill if you needed to fill it on the back side. Put a garden hose in there. You'd be filling this tank right here. Right here is the septic hose. I'll show you the end of it. That just twists on to the other side. I can show you, I can send you links to how to drain a septic system on an RV. That'll help. This is where I keep the rod for the awning, which I'll send you that link as well when you rent it. So that's right there. I always keep it snug right there. Garden hose if you need to hook up at a campsite. There are some gloves for when you're doing the septic. Um, I just had a few disinfecting wipes left over, so I left them in here for the next person to use. I don't usually have those in here, in here, but they are in here now. Gloves. Those are just extra parts that I keep in here, so I have them. And then that's the back side of the water heater. So if you're going to keep anything in this storage compartment while you're traveling, you don't want to have it too close to the water heater if you're going to be using it, just so it doesn't get hot. So that's that compartment. Lock that up. And I think that is everything. I'll stand back real quick, make sure I didn't forget anything. If you want to know what's on the roof, which you shouldn't be up there, I got the air conditioner, the vent, vent. But yeah, that is the Dutchman. So hopefully that answers some of your questions before you get here to pick it up. If you have any questions, of course, you can always get a hold of me. And thanks for watching.